For those who are not here, I would like to recap on what we're talking about. Um, we are actually sharing the word of God based on the event that happened, or should I say a situation that happened, where the uncle was visited by his nephew. And then what actually happened is, because this nephew was always complaining to the uncle, I've got this problem, this problem, this problem. Now, when they came to visit the uncle, the uncle was very excited that, no, I'm going to take this uh, nephew of mine to our church. And then on Sunday, he said, no ways, we go together to the church. And then the uncle was praying that, I pray that this nephew of mine must repent and be saved and be a child of God like me. Hallelujah. And then what actually happened, the nephew reluctantly uh, allowed, uh, joined them and they went to the church. And as the preacher was hearing the word of God, the pastor was hearing the word of God, this uncle was looking at the nephew and he was, he realized the nephew was like not interested. He was like, he was looking at the watch, what time are we getting out of this place? And then as they were going home, uh, the uncle said, um, how was the service? And then the nephew said, no. What I've realized, I don't know these pastors, do they go to, do they get trained as to how to speak to people? Your pastor was monotonous, he didn't have sense of humor, he didn't have this, he didn't have, and then he mentioned all the things that were wrong as far as the presentation is concerned. And then the uncle said, I, I was so praying that you would repent and uh, I don't know, but it's up to you because you said you didn't get anything. Now, the gist of the matter is, now the nephew said, uncle, or Hrothman, after all, you are so obsessed about me being saved. You're talking about this Jesus. I want to know, what will I have if I accept Jesus Christ? Will my problems go away? Will my headache go away? Will the struggles that I'm having go away? Just tell me, why are you so obsessed about me accepting Jesus? So the question was, what will I have if I accept Jesus? And then the uncle responded. And then that's where this message is coming from. The uncle started to explain about the peace of God, the peace with God. He, he, he indicated that it does not mean that your struggles will disappear overnight, but in your struggles, in the storms of life, you will have that assurance that only comes when you have accepted Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then we as the children of God this morning, we are continuing along that vein of saying, last week we talked about who we are in Christ. And then I explained that God accepts us as we are. We are complete in Christ. Hallelujah. And then I also mentioned that the, we've got the nature of God. When you accept Christ, you don't live in fear. You've got the wisdom of God. And then I also explained that you've got the ability of God. You can do things that a natural person cannot do. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want us to continue on that vein. I just wanted to give that background so that we must uh, go move together. Let's read the book of Acts chapter 6. Uh, that's where we're going to get the message of this morning. If you can move to, with me to the book of Acts chapter 6. Uh, if your Bible is having a title that you will re realize that it's written, Choosing of the Seven. So you will get the context of this message as we are going to be reading. Now it's Acts chapter 6. I'm reading it from the NIV. It reads as follows. In those days when the number of disciples were increasing, the Jews among them complained among the Hebrew Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. Verse number 2. So the 12 disciples gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word in order to wait on the tables. Yeah, now I want you to listen to verse number three. It says, brothers, let's choose seven men 
from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom, and we will turn this responsibility over to them. What was actually happening here is when the ministry was increasing, when the ministry was growing, there was a need for, 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 for the 12 disciples. They were always saving the food, doing this uh, administration work. And they said, no one, we cannot continue to do this administration work. Let's choose seven men uh, that will help us uh, to do that. And I want to see the criteria that was used to choose these seven men. It reminds me of us when we were still at uh, universities and what. Uh, usually, at the end of the year, they would choose the SRC, Student Representative Council. And the criteria they used to choose those people is totally different from this one. When they choose the SRC, you know, they want somebody who is loud, somebody who is rebellious, somebody who can convince Somebody who's influential, and uh, this is not how this is not the criteria they used here. Amen. I want us to look at the criteria that was used to choose the seven, and then I want each one of us to to ask themselves: If I was there, was I gonna make the cut of this seven? Hallelujah. Okay, they said, let us choose. Number one, brothers, choose seven men among you who are known, number one, to be full of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Here we are talking about people who are full of the Spirit. Let me tell you, when we are children of God, talking about what do we have when we have Jesus, we are supposed to be full of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The question that I have to each one of us, what are you full of? As children of God, we are supposed to be known that we are full of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. Hallelujah. And we know that... If, I, 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 I like what the Word of God says. that I will, Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will send the Holy Spirit. And then here when we, were, we are reading here in Acts chapter 6, it was after the Holy Spirit have been sent to the disciples. It was after they've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's why they were talking about people who are full of the Spirit. My brothers and sisters, in this life, you will not make it if you are not full of the Spirit. You will not make it if you are full of other things. You will make it if you are full of other things and neglect the Holy Spirit. Just ask yourself, am I full of the Holy Spirit? Am I sensitive to the Word of God? Am I set sensitive to the Holy Spirit who, 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 who abides in me? Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, uh, we know that the Holy Spirit is a person. You can communicate with Him. You can talk to Him. He can lead you. He can guide you. He can show you where to, to go, what to do. Hallelujah. You can't afford to live without that com companion. The word of God called him the comforter. Hallelujah. All right, let's move along. They were full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. They were full of the Holy Spirit. I did mention a little bit last week about wisdom. Not last week, two weeks ago. In this life, my brothers and sisters, we need the wisdom of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hallelujah. We have to fear God. Whatever we do, first question, does this please God? Yes or no? If it's no, why do you do it? Hallelujah. I mean, you cannot mock God. You cannot uh, uh, dribble God, if I can put it that way. God knows everything. He's the creator of heaven and earth. So for you to be able to navigate through life, you need the wisdom of God. How many people died or that were robbed when they thought they were helping because they did something without the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is that thing that will tell you, yeah, yeah, this person is asking for a lift, but don't stop, go. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the wisdom of God. And you can't un understand it. Oh, man, I should have. And then only to realize that that person was going to rob you, hijack you and everything. But the wisdom of God it helps you to know what to do, when to do, and how to do it. Hallelujah. Now they said, we must choose people that are full of wisdom. I'm just going to 
uh, read it going down. We will turn this responsibility over to them. I like this. And we'll give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. Uh, let me tell you something that um, uh, initially I didn't understand why uh, people said uh, sharing the word or the minister of the word is work. It's one thing to preach one message like once in a year, but it's another thing to find yourself preaching this Sunday. You only skip that Sunday and the following Sunday they say, uh, Pastor Peter, are you ready? And then after that, you skip one Sunday, they said you must preach. You, you cannot just do it if you are not giving yourself attention to the word. Hallelujah. I remember another pastor. I'm not going to mention his name. He said uh, there was this guy who was ambitious in his church. And uh, so one Sunday, it just happened that he was, not, he was leaving. He was going somewhere. And then he said, brother, will you mind to share the word of God on Sunday? And this guy was excited. He said, yes, of course, pastor. I was waiting for this time. And then he shared the word of God. He got a very nice topic. Everybody was clapping hands. And then um, the following Sunday, it's like that guy shared everything that he had. His tank was empty. The following Sunday, the pastor said, Brother, I, I realize you, sh you shared a very powerful message. Can you continue? Then he digged deep and think of all the other scriptures that he couldn't... Then he said, no, it's fine. But he just took everything out of himself. Then the third Sunday, the pastor said, no, I realize that you're doing very well. I don't want to interfere. Will you mind to share once more? Ah, that brother said, no, 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 pastor. <laughs> he was actually, I'm just confirming that the issue of preaching and sharing the word it's not like when you're teaching mathematics where you know today we're doing factorization, tomorrow is this, you know. Then it's something that you have to be in uh, conversing with the Holy Spirit. You have to, to know what the Word of God is saying. Because otherwise you will end up saying what you think is necessary, but that is not approved by God. Hallelujah. So these people, they said they want to give attention to prayer and the ministry of the Word. I like what my sister said. She was encouraging us that there is grace of prayer. You can't be a Christian. You, you, you can't even begin to talk about being a Christian and not be a prayerful person. We live in the, in the time and places where it's only prayer that can sustain us. Each time you wake up, thank you, Father. When you go through the day, thank you, Father. In the evening, thank you, Father. By the way, when we talk about prayer, we, we're just talking about communicating with God. You talk to him and he talks to you back. The good thing about our God is that when we pray, when we talk to him, he responds. Unlike these other gods, like a goat cannot respond to you. A stone cannot respond to you. Hallelujah. But our God responds and he answers prayer. Our Pastor Chris read a, verse, a, a, a scripture, Matthew 7, 7, Ask and you shall receive. That's what the word of God is saying. Hallelujah. Let's move right along. Uh, verse number five. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose, listen to this. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Hey, when they chose these people, they didn't make mistake. Initially, they said, let's choose seven men who are full of the spirit and wisdom. Now, there was this guy called Stephen. He was a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know that as Christians, as a matter of fact, the word of God said, it's impossible to please God without faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Hallelujah. Now, they needed a man who is full of faith. And they choose Stephen. Because of time, my brothers and sisters, today we are just going to zoom on Stephen. They chose Stephen, Philip, uh, Prochorus, Timon, and the other Nicholas, and the others. Nicholas, I don't have anything against you. But today we are just talking about Stephen. Hallelujah. So, we are going to zoom on Stephen. And then, by God's grace, we will see 
the characteristics or the attributes that Stephen had. Okay, let's go to verse number 8. Now, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Hallelujah. Stephen, I said we're going to concentrate on Stephen. If by mistake I say Stephen, I am still referring to Stephen. Hallelujah. He was a man full of God's grace and power. The word of God in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the world. Hallelujah. We as children of God, we've got the power that, only, that we only get from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And we've got the grace of God. We, we, we were talking about being overwhelmed by the grace of God. The grace of God is that unmerited favor of God. We are so favored that things just happen that we cannot explain them. We, we, we cannot put one and one. The grace of God is just upon us. The, the, the grace of God, I, I like the, the, this explanation of saying that when we talk about the grace of God, it's when you get what you don't deserve. Hallelujah. You and I were sinners that deserve to go to hell. Some of us should have been dead by now, but the grace of God sustained us. Hallelujah. It was only the grace of God that we are still here, healthy as we are. That sickness should have killed us. That problem should have made us, send us to the mental institution, but we are still here. Just by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Now, Stephen was a man full of the grace and power, and he did great wonders and miracles and signs among the people. Now, here is the turning point of my message. With all that thing, he had the Spirit of God, he had faith, he had the grace of God, he had power. But listen to what verse 9 is saying. It comes back to what the uncle was telling the nephew. That it does not mean that when you accepted Jesus, all the problems will go. Verse 9. Opposition arose. My brothers and sisters, I don't know how to say it. But in this world, as long as you and I are still alive, you will meet opposition. You will meet tribulation. You will meet people that will be against you. You will meet people that you will ask yourself, what is this person going to gain if uh, people that are just jealous, people that are just against you. Let me tell you, it's good when you know that when you are a child of God, when you have Jesus, you will meet opposition. As a matter of fact, even Jesus himself met opposition every day. Hallelujah. So if Jesus met opposition, don't think you are spared from opposition. And it's very important it's very important. My brother Adimola here was saying that he, he traveled and somebody said, no, it's not going to happen. That's opposition. That's opposition. The question is, what do you do when you meet opposition? It's the time where you must know who you are, what you are made of, who you believe in. Hallelujah. I, 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 I really appreciate and applaud him for how he responded. He said, I didn't travel all the way to hear this negativity. I know my Redeemer lives. And it, it turned, and, and because of his faith, just imagine if he was told it's not going to happen and he just made a U turn. Hey, my brothers and sisters, there are places, there are situations that will demand us to make a U turn. But as the children of God, we must have that faith that will say, I'm not going to turn back. No more turning back, forward we go. Hallelujah. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did for me yesterday, what he did to my brothers yesterday, he will do it for me today. He, he was faithful yesterday. He's faithful today. He will continue to be faithful. He is not man that he should lie. Hallelujah. And he does not change. He's not a favor of pe persons. Hallelujah. Opposition arose. However, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen. Okay, let's skip that. This man began to argue with Stephen. 
I, 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 I get surprised, man. I get surprised. When people start to argue with you for the things that you know are right, don't be surprised. You are not the first one to be argued with. Even Stephen, they argued with him. I know sometimes it's very unfair on your side when somebody's telling you that this is wrong when you know it is right. But let me tell you, when people argue with you, it's very important to understand who you are. It's very important to understand your position. Uh, there is a statement that is not so holy, but it's an English statement. They say there's no point in arguing with a fool. You know it, ne? Because people might not notice the difference. So why waste your energy and uh, your wisdom arguing for things that you know are not going to help you in, with anything? Hallelujah. They argued with Stephen. Let's move right along. I like this. Verse 10. But they could not stand up against his wisdom, his intelligence, his power, his inspiration. Because the spirit of because he was speaking under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, when you have the Spirit of God, they may argue with you, but they will realize, they will realize the power, the intelligence, the maturity that you are speaking with because of the Spirit of God. So when you've got the Spirit of God, you've got all these things. You are matured, you are not moved emotionally by things. Even when things happen because of maturity and wisdom and intelligence, you are not crushed down. Amen. Even when you hear the bad news that are supposed to, 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 to like destroy you, you stand up because you know who is in you. Hallelujah. I've quoted this scripture and I'm going to quote it again. We are of God and greater is he who is in us than the one who is in the world. And there is no problem, no challenge, nothing that will come to you that will be greater than your strength. The fact that God allowed it to happen to you is because you know that you are up to the challenge. Hallelujah. All you've got to do is to stand and having done all to stand, you just trust in God. You just say, Lord, I trust in you. When I'm weak, I know that that's when I'm strong. Hallelujah. I like what the word of God says. When I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. When I look at the situation and I said, no, 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 no. I'm just giving a, a simple example. When I know that they, they are demanding 200,000 and I check in my bank account, I don't even have a thousand. It looks like it's dismal, it's hopeless. But I know that when I'm weak, my balance account may be weak. But I know that he's strong. And then I don't pray from the point of my weakness. I pray from the point that he is strong. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, weak as you may be. I'm just giving an example. If you are beaten and you are, you are exhausted, you cannot even throw one punch. But a heavyweight boxer comes and says, my brother, I'm with you now. And you just stand behind him. All your weaknesses are not counting anymore. Because now, whoever is going to come to you now will have to go via this giant. Hallelujah. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that's what the word of God is saying. When we are weak, when we cannot do anything, we just cling on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no way we can lose when we are clinging on Jesus Christ. How can I lose with Jesus in front of me? Hallelujah. When I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. I just want us to move. Uh, I, I already mentioned that uh, the opposition will come. Uh, troubles will continue to come. But it does not matter that... Uh, it will defeat us. And they accused him of things that he was speaking. As a matter of fact, uh, we're not going to read it. Uh, they accused him that he was blaspheming against the Holy Spirit and uh, the Son and Rins. They took him to the courts and everything. So verse uh, chapter 7, it's actually talking about Stephen 
defending himself. Now, as he was defending himself, they even got more angry. They got more angry. And then I like what is happening in verse 54. After they argued with him, they accused him of all those things. Verse 54. Let's read it. Uh, it's Acts chapter 7, verse 54. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But listen to this. I, man, I like this. But Stephen, still full of the Holy Spirit. When I read it, I just enjoyed, I just felt strong uh, analyzing, analyzing the, the word still. After everything that happened, Stephen was still full of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, how long can you and I stand? A lot of people just to get one accusation, the second one, you do this, it does not work, then you get discouraged, you get dismayed. Let me tell you, it was not so with Stephen. After everything that happened, he was still full of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, whatever happens, do not allow the Holy Spirit to depart from you. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not allow the Holy Spirit to depart from you in such a way that you become dull and you cannot communicate with the Holy Spirit. Be full of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Be full of the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Philip, I'm just going to summarize. It's 54 to verse 60. It, we know the story of, of Stephen. Not Philip, I'm sorry. Of Stephen. They were about to stone him. But listen to what happened. He saw that here these people are going to kill me. My brothers and sisters, maybe this will help you. It does not matter. It does not mean because you are a Christian, you pray, you fast, you come to church, you do everything that the word of God is saying. It does not, it does not mean you will not have troubles. And let me tell you, I know this is not what you wanted to hear. Some of the troubles that you will go through, they will lead you to death. And then when I was reading and meditating on this scripture, unfortunately, I didn't get time to actually understand, check the, 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 how old was Stephen when they stoned him. But from, from what we read, when he was asked to come and usher to help with the distribution of food, they would look for somebody who is still strong. They will look for somebody still young, if I can put it that way. So we can safely say Stephen was still young and energetic. He was able to, 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 to work. But even young as he is, we remember that he was stoned at a tender age. I, I don't want to stipulate and say how old he was. My brothers and sisters, this will help us to understand. Some of our beloved people, they depart. You find this person is a Christian, and all of a sudden, they get sick or whatever happens, or they get involved in an accident or whatever, and they die. As children of God, there are things that we will not understand. Hallelujah. But let's just realize that it's not, it, it's not a matter of how old you were when you die, but what you did with the life that God has given you. Hallelujah. Stephen, young as he was, he died. But I want to us to look at what happened when he was dying. Full, uh, uh, verse 55, but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven. Hey, what do you do when people are stoning you? What do you do when things are tough? What do you do when you are told that we are going to repossess your house? What do you do when you are told that we are going to retrench you? What do you do when you're told that you've got cancer? What do you do when things are tough, like to the last degree? When you are tested to the last degree, what do you do when you are told that uh, your son, your daughter is involved in an accident and we cannot confirm whether they are still alive or dead? What do you do? I'm just, my brothers and sisters, I'm just saying, what do you do when things are at the worst? It's not the time to look to your ancestors. It's not the time for you to look to your knowledge. It's not the time for you to look to the relatives and friends. I like what Stephen did. When things were tough, when he realized that death was imminent, 
he looked up to heaven. Iman. The psalmist said, I look up to the hills from whence come from my help. My help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Who made heaven and earth. My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you this morning. Things will be tough in life, but there is only one place you can look at. You can look at Father. You can look up heaven. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 3 verse 3. It says, my, my God is my glory and is the lifter of my head. When everybody is saying, ah, that guy is defeated, they've taken everything. And you know, people have this tendency of saying, they've taken everything. Let me tell you, when you're in that state, you can look up. When people are writing you off, there is one who created you, who knows the number of hair on your head. His name is Jehovah Jireh. His name is the provider. Amen. He said, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. You can trust in him. Your children can leave you. Your wife can leave you. Your brothers can leave you. But he is said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Hallelujah. Stephen looked up. And let me tell you, where you look, it's where you will, you, or you will see what you are looking at. Stephen looked up and because he looked up, look what he saw. And he saw the glory of God. I like this. When people were stoning him, he saw the glory of God. Let me tell you, sometimes when you look at your friends and you, you tell your friends that they are going to do this and this, they are going to repossess my house, they will say, you, 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 you are better. They are only do, doing this. Mine is worse and what, what, And they will make you to feel even bad. Let me tell you, my brothers, when you look at God, you will see the glory of God. And before it, you will be praising him. He will show you things that you have forgotten. He will remind you of how he was with you when you were going through the waters and when you were going through tough times. Hallelujah. Let's look up to God. And then I want to conclude by saying that when he realized that I now, now, now there's no turning back. In verse 59, while they were stoning him, I can't even imagine the pain that he was going through. I've never been stoned, ladies and gentlemen. But while they were stoning him, Stephen, verse 59, prayed. Oh, if we can just have that thing of saying when things are tough, when they are stoning us, we just pray to the Almighty God. Hallelujah. And he prayed this prayer. He said, Lord Jesus, Receive my spirit. Let me tell you as I conclude. Even if, if, even if it means that you must die. The word of God says. Blessed are those who die. While they are in the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't denounce Christianity. Don't denounce the fact that you are the child of God. Say I'm going to hold on to what I believe. In Venda there is a song that says. Nidofarera kachipambano. I'm going to hold on to the cross until I get my crown. Hallelujah. Even if it means I'm dying, let me die holding on to the cross. Even if it means things are tough, let me tell you, let me continue. Let me die praying. Don't die grumbling, man. If you have to choose, you are dying, complaining or grumbling or praying. What do you choose? Choose die praying. Talking to your almighty God. Hallelujah. I believe that we are encouraged. I was so encouraged when I look at the life of Stephen. He was the man full of the spirit. He was the man that was able to stand for what he believed. And then even if things. And let me tell you. Let me tell you. There were a lot of people. I, I, I'm going to say this the other time. When Stephen died. A lot of people were convicted. And they received Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let your death, let your struggles be a testimony to other people. Let them come and say, we saw this man going through tough time. But in those tough times, what the devil meant for, 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 for bed, God turned it around and it became a testimony. Hallelujah. We serve the same God that was with Stephen. He's the same God that, has helped, that, 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 that helped 
many of our brothers and sisters, let me tell you, it, it does not change. He's still the same. Hallelujah. We can trust on him. The question is, where are you looking at? Let's stand up on our feet. Hallelujah.